you want to play golf? Do you want to play golf? Sorry for the sensible golf reference. We'll probably get around to playing that one of these weeks. But this time on Cheney Vision, it's leaderboard. The first golf game I ever played. And the big name, the biggest name in golfing games on the home computers in the mid 1980s ported to every system under the sun or pretty much as we'll see i started off on the commodore 64 which i believe is probably the original version certainly this or the atari xe there's no pc version um i was looking for one and there's not it's world-class leaderboard on the pc so you get to select up to four players and type in your name it's by access software uh which means it was published by us gold in the uk of course who published all the access software in the uk professional novice or beginner um and you select courses one two three or four which means there's 72 holes in this game and yeah you do have the draw times you start so trying to remember how to play this you aim with left and right and you select which cover you want with up and down so we're going to want one wood and we're going to want to try and get full power but as with all golf games i think i've got that wrong that hasn't gone very far No. Um, my big memory of this, and I had this on the Amstrad CPC on the Kix label, was the incredibly long draw times. Um, but right, let's see if I can remember how to do this. All right, no. Um, yeah. Probably shouldn't use one wood for that. But you have to hold down the fire button and then release it when you've got the right power, and then press fire again to get the snap and direction right. So over to the Tower XE. It says Atari version by Kevin M. Homer, so the C64 version would have been the original. And we go on course one again. So right now I've mastered the controls. And here we go. Full power. That's more the kind of distance you want. And you want to stop that. If you want it dead ahead, you want to stop that in the middle on the right hand side there between power and if you see that snap thing there you want to go and get that in the middle right so now we want something uh it's gonna just get a putting wedge we should just get me down there hopefully is that gonna be far enough the manual does come with a chart telling you how far the golf sticks go golf sticks golf clubs and yes um it's incredibly easy to hit in all the versions the flagpole um, <laughs> it always bounces off i mean given the size of the ball in relation to everything but yeah it's incredibly easy to hit the flagpole over to the Amstrad cpc and yes you're going hmm system font on the menus a bit lazy but hey ho conversion by canvas in the uk this is the version i had and my memory is it takes forever to draw the screen certainly as a kid he seemed to be waiting around forever and it's very green as well there's an Amstrad pcw version of this incidentally um right so one wood haven't played this on the amstrad for years oh look at his left leg look at the back of his left leg what's going on there <laughs> just an outline right so that went down quite well there and i have timed all the screen redraws on leaderboard um, just to show the difference, the C64 version takes six and a half seconds to draw the first screen. The XE takes 5.5 seconds, a little bit faster. CPC, 10 seconds. And the Spectrum, about eight and a half seconds. So again, putting wedge. Down we go. And on Novice, there's no wind or anything like that. You get professional, then you get wind influencing the ball. And you get a wind indicator showing you um where the wind is so we're gonna be putting now we're gonna be putting little chart on the right hand side changes and it's quite a big putt 60 feet had to be terry wogan to get it in that far terry wogan of course had the longest televised putt until very recently i think including professionals it was the longest putt on uh, ever televised yeah these these Screen read all times on the CPC are a bit, uh, bit annoying. Over the Sinclair Spectrum, and I've selected course four, not course one. Let's get a bit of variation in. 
And this course four should be the hardest course. And you can see we've got to land these things on islands. Yes, the leaderboard golf course is the only golf course in the world which has lots of islands where there's no way to get between the islands. It's all a little bit weird. And it's a different screen layout from the CPC. Um, you've got your display down the left-hand side there, showing you the power. Oh, I've gone off there. I got that completely wrong. Try and get that onto that island. It's going to go off the end, isn't it? No, it's not. Sometimes you get it on the edge, it'll give you a little island to stand on. See, it draws that little circle. Sometimes you can end up standing on the water on that little circle. Right, so I've got to get down to the hole there. But how does the man get between the islands? I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm here, I'm criticising. It's the only... Well, I suppose it's easier than drawing trees around the course. There's got to be a technical reason why they opted to do leaderboard in this way. And it must be to do with not wanting to have to deal with the rough and trees around the course and other things. If you just have water, it's just water, but it does make it... It gives the game a completely, totally unique feel. There's nothing else like this. Um, because it's it's got its own kind of weird style. Um... It's, I, I've always found it very atmospheric because of this. But, um, it, it, yeah, it, it is a bit weird. Well, I'm going to try and get this ball in the hole. I find the Specky version a little bit harder than the C64 and Atari versions. Right, there's an Atari ST version, and this version has been cracked by Mad Max of Germany. Or dispatched by Mad Max, cracked by Boss. Not the computer from the Green Death, I hope. We had to do something, I suppose, after we got defeated in 1974. Get novice. And we got 18 holes. And again, there's 72 holes in total on this game to play. So you're not going to get bored of it anytime soon. And look at this on the ST, how fast it draws it. And there's no water everywhere. And look how you've got proper water bunkers or ponds, sand bunkers and everything here. This is completely... Different. This is far more like a modern golf game. Now I've got that in the water. But of course it loses that atmosphere from the 8-bit versions, that weird kind of everything on an island atmosphere. And I'm just getting to grips with the controls here because it's slightly different. Everything's on the mouse. Right, I think I've done it there. You've got to hold down the mouse, release it, and press the other mouse button, basically. And it's a little bit complicated until you've read the instructions and played with it a little bit. These graphics are absolutely lovely. There is an Amiga version as well. Um, unfortunately, I couldn't get that to run, so we're not going to be showing it. But I believe from the screenshots and the videos I've seen, it's ostensibly the same. I did think, and I was led to believe there was a PC version. I got the PC out, um, set it all up, went to download the game. And in fact, the only version available is the sequel, World Class Leaderboard. So um, yeah, that's, that's a different game. So I abandoned that idea. We do world-class leaderboard another day. I'm really enjoying this on the ST. And it's just so, it's so different having the trees. It's far more like Jack Nicholas and other, and PJ Golf Tour and things like that that came out later. In fact, in many ways, it's more accessible um, because it, it's slightly simplified. It feels a bit more arcadey. Not in the way sensible golf feels arcadey. It just, it's a little bit faster. There's less left pernickety bits shall we say it's not the simulation isn't accurate and the game benefits from that I, I think personally as somebody who's tried to play golf games down the years and got a bit bogged down with them and a complete surprise because i was expecting this sd version to be pretty much the same as the 8-bit versions with nicer graphics and speed the speed is phenomenal we know the 16 bits are faster but it really nails the redraw in the way the 8-bit versions don't. I was expecting it to take at least a couple of seconds to display this kind of screen, but no, it just it just absolutely hammers it out. Okay, it's only got a couple of types of tree and things like that, but even so, no, it's quite good. 
All right, so give that one wood down there. Nearly full power, and that should get me onto the green. Nearly. This ST version is showing me the wind. I don't know if it influences me on novice. I'm not sure, but it's showing me that indicator anyway. Putting wedge onto the green. Oh, dear. Speed as well. This, this ST version really cracks along because of this redraw. Now this waiting around. All right, so let's cutting wedge onto there. Come on, it's got to get closer now. There you go. Should have better just be able to knock that in. Come on then. That little stick on the left hand side shows you the the lay of the green. Too much power, and that's one thing the ST and the 8 bit versions share. It's really easy to use too much power towards the hole and just tip your ball out, or too little as well. It's the power meter could perhaps do with a little bit of work. So here we go back to the Atari XE. And the ball is still nicely animated, and the feel of the game is essentially the same in terms of the handling, the way the club swing, and so on. They've nailed that between the versions. Am I in the water again? I'm in the water again. The problem is, with the 8-bit versions, is there seems to be a funny thing going on with the distance. Sometimes it's very easy at distance to knock your ball into the water when you think there's going to be enough space or enough land. Um, it, it can just sometimes seem like it, there's something slightly wrong with the scaling or the calculation. I don't know. It just feels wrong sometimes. And it's going to knock this in. There we go. Back to the C64. And again, everything's islands, everything's islands. Perhaps islands are easier to draw than sand bunkers into green. There's got to be a good coding reason why they did it like this. Um, but you do lose that, as I say, the atmosphere on the ST version. It just doesn't have it. This whole thing about being surrounded by water. But I used to, used to, it used to worry me as a kid. It's like, how does he get between the islands? Where's the boat? Do you have to sail around? This is the world's most impractical golf course. Has that gone in the water? No, it hasn't. I thought it might have done. Right, so can I... 221 yards. I should be able to, with a one wood, hopefully get that down there. Without consulting a chart. Oh, no, no, no. Come on, I can do this. There we go. I've overhit it. I've overhit it, haven't I? Ugh. The easy thing to do is hit it onto the next island and then try and get it right, but it makes it a slightly odd game of golf because you're just trying to constantly trying to avoid the water. Oh, and we're looking back now, so you can see. And it's interesting, I'm standing on a little island of my own as well. Um, it's interesting, it does work out all the 3D, it must do it very roughly, but it gets the angles. Right, it always gets you facing the hole. It, there's some kind of basic geometry going on. There must be tables full of information um, with the landscape on. I was, just, I was thinking when I was playing this, imagine the Freescape engine used for golf. I suppose it'd be slow as anything. But you'd, you could use that. You wouldn't have to move around, but you could use Freescape static to position yourself around a golf course. You wouldn't need to zoom around or anything. You just you could just use it to calculate the angles. That'd be quite interesting. I suppose there's any chance of anyone writing an eight-bit golf game using Freescape like that, is there? But everything's quite dark on the CPC here. They've used the darker, well, not the darkest, but one the darker green as opposed to the light green. Um, it just it's a little bit depressing, and that use of the system font as well. It's like a little bit lazy can't be bothered it could be a nicer status bar on the right there back over to the specy where things are a little bit brighter because they've only one green and it's quite garish 476 yards that's going to land in the water isn't it because always on the bounce 
always on the bounce. You land in the water. You never go straight in the water. It always bounces, and then the computer decides it's in the water. It's aiming to the left there a bit more. It's going to end in the water again, isn't it? Yes. <sighs> it's, just, it's just the bane of leaderboard. There is something going on. I don't know what it is, whether it makes things look... I don't know. There's something weird that just goes on at distance. I really am standing on the water now. I'm just... This is completely bizarre. A very, very wet thing. I'm playing from the water on a little island of my own. Water? Of course, water. Not quite all the power this time. That should be latched down nicely. Oh! How? How? How does it hit the flagpole from that distance? And it happens again and again and again on the 8-bit versions. The chances of hitting the flagpole dead on from long distances are minuscule. And yet, on all the 8-bit versions, it keeps on happening. And it must be down to the simplified physics, or not physics, simplified kind of geometry and maths and stuff it has to use. It's, instead of having kind of just very discrete units, it must have these huge whacking great big units that say if you hit it in this general direction yeah it's, that's where the flagpole is it's going to bounce off it it's it, it, just annoying as is me missing the hole there Come on, let's get this in hit the ball thank you right that's nine doing really badly on the spectrum Let's do the 18th hole of course one on the ST. So I can't even see the flag. I'm assuming it's over to the left there. It's like on the bunker. Just out, just out. But I was right though, it was over there. Or was it? It's difficult to tell. There's no... Perhaps there could be in the game a compass indicating which direction you're facing. And because perhaps it was straight ahead. Right, so passing wedge should be about right, about quarter power. Here we go. Oh no, that was an incredibly stupid thing. That's I'm just on the putting green. And the, the hill is diagonally across according to the little stick. That's not gonna be enough. See the stick shows you it's gonna roll downhill in that direction. So now it's going to roll to the right. Oh, one more. There we go. And there's my fantastic score. I did much better on the ST than the other versions. Um, especially after the first couple of holes where I was just getting to grips with the controls. But I've got a few. Uh, um, well, 107. That's not fantastic really, is it? So Leaderboard, it's pretty much the first proper golf game, superseded by other games like PGA Tour and Jack Nicklaus and, and so on. Um, it is revolutionary. The 8-bit versions and 16-bit versions need to be separated out, really, because the 16-bit versions are pretty much like modern golf games on a conventional golf course. And it's a very simplified version of the games that you play today. Very, very playable, very quick, very accessible. And that's the key thing. If you can't get into the modern golf games, even ones from the 90s, you may well find leaderboard on the ST and hopefully the Amiga as well um, to be a more accessible, quicker and more enjoyable golf game to try out. On the 8-bit versions, it's a very atmospheric, almost strange game, a strange world where you're playing on these little islands in this massive ocean. And it makes it very atmospheric and just a little bit weird, but it sets leaderboard out from pretty much everything else. The leading versions are clearly the C64 and the Atari 8-bit versions. They've got the fastest redraw. They play the best. I've, I've found and my unscientific measurements indicated the XE version was slightly faster. That may be inaccurate, but they both play the same. They both are very, very good and very enjoyable. Spectrum and CPC versions. Well, the CPC version looks very dull and could be a little bit, little bit more polished and has horrifically long drawing times although the spectrum version frankly isn't that much faster 
That said, they're still one of the two better games for golf on those systems. But if you're going to play leaderboard, check out the ST version because it's very much the genesis of the modern golf game. Or play instead the C64 or XE versions because they're so atmospheric and just so generally strange but yet accessible and enjoyable. I came to this with very low expectations, but I enjoyed leaderboard quite a lot really.